In the last few months, large language models have taken the world by storm. In this video, I would like to introduce you to one of the hottest repositories on GitHub. The repository that I'm talking about is ScrapeGrab AI, and within a few weeks, this repository has already received more than 8,000 stars on GitHub. Now, if you scrape data from the internet on a regular basis, this library is going to make your life so much easier, but you can do so much more with it. For example, fetch data from an XML or a JSON source. Now, this video consists of two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you how you can scrape data from the internet with ScrapeGap AI. And in the second part, Marco Vinici Guerra, one of the authors of this GitHub repository, is going to show how you can extract data from a JSON file. Let's get started right away. So as you can see, I have created a new folder in VS Code. Selected this folder. I'm going to create a new file here called main.by. And let's then open a terminal and let's create a virtual environment. Now, before I proceed, I highly recommend you to use a virtual environment in order to install this library. And in order to do that, I'm going to type Python. Now, if you use a Mac computer or Linux computer, you're going to type Python 3. For Windows, it's just Python, hyphen M, V E N V dot V E N V. And if you want to know more about creating a virtual environment, there is another video on my channel that explains the entire process. Now, I'm just going to press Enter. The virtual environment is now being created. You want to click Yes here in order to select this folder. And now, in the next step, we're also going to activate this virtual environment. So, type dot V E N V slash scripts slash activate like this and then press enter we're now working in this virtual environment so now we're also going to install all the necessary libraries the libraries that i'm going to install are pip install and of course if you use a mac computer you're going to type pip3 instead of pip pip install scrape graph ai it takes quite a while to install this library it's quite heavy but i'm going to do it anyway and as soon as this library has been installed, I'm also going to install pandas and .env. So type pip install pandas. And then we also have to install the .env library. And we can do that with pip install python-.env. And once we have finalized the installation of all packages, I'm just going to close this terminal and create a new file that I call .env. And in this file, this is where you're going to store the ChatGPT API key. Now, in this example, I'm going to use ChatGPT 3.5 from OpenAI because it's one of the most popular LLMs, but you're free to use any large language model with the ScrapeGrab AI. So just make sure that you put your OpenAI API key here. And then I'm going to navigate back to main.py. And now let's add the script here. So as you can see, I'm importing the ScrapeGrab AI library. I'm also importing .env, and this .env library is just to make sure that I can save my um, ChatGPT key here in .env. I'm importing pandas so I can write the outputs to an Excel file, and I'm also importing OS, which has also to do with this part of the code where I fetch the um, OpenAI API key from the .env file. Then what you see here is the configuration. So in this section, you configure the LLM that you're working with, if you want to know more about the code that you see here, you can navigate to the GitHub page where you can find a lot of code examples on how to use this library. And I will put a link to this uh, GitHub page in the description of this video. And in this part, we create the actual uh, ScrapeGrab AI object. So what you see here is the prompt, list me all the articles. Um, and then you see here as well the source, which is wired.com. Now, if you want to scrape any other website, you can of course change this to any other website. And of course, if you want to um, change the prompt, you can do that here. And you can also define in the prompt which fields you want to extract and which fields you want to exclude. And then here you're referring to the uh, graph config, which is of course referring to uh, this object here. And now we're storing the result of whatever we scrape in the variable result. And in this part, we're creating the data frame uh, to be used for pandas. But ScrapeGrab AI also creates a dictionary with articles in it. So you have to make sure that you're referring to result and then articles. And then here I'm writing to Excel. Um, I'm writing to wire.xlsx. So if you want to write to any other Excel file, of course, you can change it here. And then with index is equal to false, I'm determining that I do not want to see the row number uh, as an extra column. Now, if you don't know what this means, um, try to remove it and you will see why it's very helpful. And then we're ready to run our script, so let's do that. So press here in order to run your script. And now you see that we still get an error because the OpenPyXL library for some reason has not been installed. So I'm just going to activate my virtual environment again. So dot type dot ve and v scripts activate. So we're now again in the virtual environment, and then I'm going to type pip 
install OpenYXL. And once your installation of OpenYXL has finalized, I'm going to try running the script again, and you will see that it's successful. It takes quite some time in order to run the script, and if it's successful, wire.xlsx will be created, so I'm going to open it in Excel. I will see that it has scraped all the articles from wired.com. So you see we have the title of every article, we also have the author. And you see in the beginning that the authors have been scraped correctly, but then for some reason the authors are not correctly scraped anymore. So that's a bit of a bummer. But for the other parts, the library did an amazing job here as it has collected all the articles from wired.com and it hasn't taken into concern any ads, for example. So these articles that you see here are equal to the articles that you see here in wired.com. Now, as usual, if you want to download the script, you can find it on my website. And there is a link to my website in the description of this video where you can download the entire script. Now, I really hope this first part of the video already gave you an idea of all the possibilities of Scrape Graph AI. Now, in the second part of this video, Marco Venici Guerra is going to show you how you can extract data from a JSON file with Scrape Graph AI. Hello to everyone. My name is Marco from uh, Scrape Graph AI, and uh, I will show you one of the other graphs that we can do in uh, Scrape Graph. Scrape Graph offers the possibility to extract information from uh, JSON files, uh, CLV, SV, and XML. In this uh, uh, short video, I will show you how is it possible to extract information from JSONs. Let's go to Graphs, JSON Scraper Graph. JSON Scraper is a, uh, a graph that is a mix of uh, four nodes. In particular, we have the fetch node, the parse node, the rag node, and the generate transfer node. In the fetch node, is it possible to fetch the JSON and open it and uh, pass it in a dictionary that will go to the parse node where there is the parsing phase. After the parsing phase, there is the rag node where the information are stored in a database, vector database. And in the last part is the part where the general answer is uh, created with the generate answer node. Let's go to the example. Uh, uh, we will use uh, local models, in particular here. And here, this is the example. At the beginning, we use uh, uh, as an LMM model, uh, Mistral, and for the meddings, nomic and med text. So the prompt is uh, given uh, the JSON, list me all the authors, title and gens of the book. So let's start with the script. Now the script is started, there is the embedding phase, and uh, we have to wait for the answer, just some seconds. The game is done, thank you, and um, see you. Now, as you have seen, Marco just showed you how to use a local large language model to, ex to extract data with Scrape Graph AI. If you want to know more about running local LLMs on your computer, there is another video on my channel that explains this entire process. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in my next video.